And now it's time for Politics Monday with Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report and Tamara Keith of NPR. So, Amy Tam, you've just been hearing what Congresswoman Bustos has said. In fact, she's still here at the table. <laughs> uh, but, Amy, what do you make of that? I mean, are you hearing from the Democrats where they want to take this country? Well, I will say this. Um, every party that's the out party always struggles with this. Who are we now that we're not in charge? And in this case, Democrats are not only the out party, they don't control anything. It's not just the White House. They don't have the House or the Senate or the White House. It is uh, in every election is a referendum on the party in power. The Republicans are the party in power. The 2018 election is going to be a referendum on whether they were able to accomplish what they said they were going to do or not. It's Democrats' job, I think, as we get into 2020 and the battle is for who is going to occupy the White House, to have that message, that their standard bearer, you ask the question, who's the leader of your party? The leader of their party is going to be the person that they nominate in 2020 to be their nominee. But that's several and years that away. It's very, it's very many years away. Remember, Republicans were successful in the midterm elections in 2010. Democrats were successful in the midterm elections in 2006 in taking control of Congress away from the opposite party, not because they were unified with the message about who they were or what they stood for. They stood against the party in power. It was a referendum on that party. Voters were not happy with the party in power, and the out party benefited. I think there's plenty of time for Democrats to figure out who they are, but they are, just like Republicans, very divided ideologically. And, and, and Tam, I mean, from your, your reporting on the Hill, your reporting on the White House, do the Democrats feel like a force that's together, that's found their voice right now? They have certainly found a way to oppose the Republican legislation. They have not splintered when it comes to votes. And part of that is credit to Nancy Pelosi's ability to whip votes, which she has uh, honed over many years in leadership. And, and also Chuck Schumer has kept them together. You know, there haven't been the defections that, particularly in the Senate, that uh, uh, President Trump had hoped he would get. You know, he had he had brought some of these moderate Republicans in red states who were up for re-election over to the White House. He had sort of tried maybe to woo them. It didn't work. They they have not they have not been in any way forced to have a wedge between them and the rest of the Democratic Party. Which which has been so far, Amy, has contributed to the fact that Republicans are still struggling to get an answer on health care. Right. And this goes to the the challenge, Judy, which is when you're a party that has been successful, as Republicans were successful in the last few years, by being basically the party of no, right? They were against everything that Democrats and, the, and President Obama stood for. That was successful to get them a governing or a political majority, but not a governing majority. So now that they're in power, they're struggling with what do you do? They have multiple factions in the Republican Party, just as Democrats have multiple factions, trying to get them all together to agree on something, like a health care bill, which is super complicated, is a lot harder than getting them all to agree that Obamacare is terrible. And Tam, you've been out on the road. You were following Bernie Sanders in the last couple of days, who's been holding rallies trying to say what the Republicans are doing is all wrong. What are you seeing? What are you feeling? Well, so one interesting thing about that is that Bernie Sanders wants Medicare for all, single payer health care. Um, but he didn't make a big thing out of it at this rally. Most of the focus at this rally that I went to in West or in uh, Kentucky was about the the Republican bill and what it would mean for people. And, and Sanders' message was really that the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, needs to be fixed, um, which is actually standing for something. It's, right. it's like a, it's not just no, it's yes, now, it's not clear that Democrats can agree on what, on what the what fix is. is, and there are, you know, right. there's more people who are quietly saying, well, maybe single payer, maybe Medicare for all, but that's, and that is, you know, a long-standing divide among Democrats. So that, but, but it sounds like Democrats can be unified at least around that. At least around that, but I think Tam's exactly right. That's going to be the bigger challenge in 2020 as the Democrats try to figure out their messaging on, do we go further to the left to talk about single payer, Medicare for all, and or do we just say, well, let's try to fix what isn't working in healthcare? That I think is going to be a big dividing line in the Democratic primary. So can't let you go without a quick question about our lead tonight, Tam. That is the new revelations about uh, the Trump campaign in Russia, Donald Trump Jr. meeting with the Russian lawyer, and so on. We've been doing a lot of reporting. Is this more of the same, or have we turned some kind of an important corner with this information? 
I, I think it's hard to know where the corners are in this. Um, th I, this is a new person. Uh, this is Donald Trump Jr., who is now a person that is involved in this, who's, whose name is out there. And, you know, a remarkable thing about this is that he basically confirmed much of it on the record, uh, which is a pretty remarkable thing. He, he confirmed that he arranged a meeting with top campaign officials with a Kremlin-linked lawyer because she was potentially offering damaging information about Hillary Clinton. That mm. That is something. It's not necessarily collusion, and collusion isn't necessarily a violation of the law. Um, mm. But in this sort of ongoing drip, 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 this was a bigger, bigger drip. Yeah, it, and it also goes back to something I feel like we talk about every time, Judy. What we, theoretically, what we should be talking about today is simply about health care. That was supposed to be yes. how we were set up this week. This is a big week to get something through. The president should be focusing all of his energy and attention on doing that. Instead, now we're talking once again about Russia. The other thing that's consistent, these are all self-inflicted. This is not something that the committees brought up or that Robert Mueller, the special prosecutors brought up. This is all coming from the lack of transparency from people either during the campaign or during the transition about their connections because with they had, Russia. they had filled out forms Correct. that did not include this latest Correct. information. So when this information comes out, they now it looks like they it. have to correct it, and it looks like they're hiding something, whether they are or not. Just imagine in another world had they come from the very beginning and been completely transparent, even. To over transparent, right? Anybody that I met that even has a Russian sounding last name, I'm going to put their name <laughs> on a piece of paper and I'm going to give it to you so you can never say that I'm trying to hide anything. But that hasn't but happened. That hasn't happened. No, and it's a direct contradiction of things that they've said publicly and on the record. Tamara Keith, Amy Walter, Politics Monday. Thank you both. You're welcome. welcome.